Hello, party people. My name is Jeremy Ginsberg, and this is my mucusless, free, Dr. Morse, fruitarian, raw vlog. I'm not sure exactly which word <laughs> hits the nail on the head because I've been pulling in different things, but just want to provide an update and also share what I've been learning and share how I've been feeling. So, I'm on day 26 or so, and I feel really great. Uh, my energy levels are much higher. I'm still getting a lot of headaches, which has been a main symptom of mine. But overall, energy levels up and feeling more excited and inspired and passionate about life, which about a month ago before I got into this, I did not have at all. So that's exciting. Anyways, I also noticed or learned that one of the plants I was using as pain relief, it's called Kratom or Kratom or Kratom. And I took that about a week ago actually for the last time. And I, I learned that it can contribute towards constipation. And so that was a huge insight for me because based on Arnold Eretz mucusless diet healing system and the books that I've read from him, which are mucusless diet and rational fasting, he talks about how all disease is really caused from constipation on a cellular level throughout the body and all the glands, all the tissues, etc. And so essentially a light bulb went off when my friend who was used to use Kratom for a while said that it was causing constipation for him and it made so much sense because when I first started this path, I prefer, it, it's a path to me, it's not a diet and the word lifestyle doesn't really sum it up. So on this path, the first eight days I was flying high and then I kind of crashed and went back on my old symptoms were coming up and I wasn't sure why. And sure, it could be emotional stuff, could be just the cycles of life. But I was taking Kratom on a daily basis for, for pain relief because I wasn't wanting, I didn't want to take any CBD oil or THC for the, the fat content. And so one thing I'm learning is what does what inside of my body, which is super empowering and exciting to really study how every single thing that I put inside of my body affects my body. It's almost common sense when I put it like that, but it's a shame that I wasn't brought up <laughs> in, in, in that type of uh, culture where it's like, hey, how do you feel after you eat this bacon cheeseburger? You know, So that was a big win for me. But to give you an idea, last Saturday night, I had one of the worst headache migraines of my life and I couldn't sleep. I took CBD, THC, and Kratom, and I was up till like two, three in the morning. It felt like a bad psychedelic trip. There was a mosquito in my ear, and I was just panic and this fear-based fight or flight, oh my gosh. And since then, I didn't take any Kratom, THC, and I just took CBD once. So that is a huge improvement, and just a sign that my symptoms are, are lower and my energy is higher, so I have the ability to, to do a practice, to do some breath work, to take a nap, to do some guided meditations, to go on a run. I've been doing a lot of nude sunbathing, which is a new passion of mine, because Arnold Ayer talks about that. And so I'm able to work with my symptoms so much more, where before they just felt like so heavy, they were weighing me down. So that's super exciting. The question you may be asking is, what are you eating? Because that's something. <laughs> I'm, I'm finally finding my groove. But last week I did a, a three-day juice fast. After reading Rational Fasting, I was just so inspired. And also in a lot of pain. So I was like, all right, I just got to fast, juice fast. So this week, it's been more stable, where I've been usually not eating breakfast, usually sleep in anyway. So if I wake up early, I kind of just hang out in my room and listen to inspiring podcasts, watch videos, do my yoga practice, breath work, meditation. And I find that's actually a great habit to get into instead of just 
going straight for tea or coffee or, or breakfast of really being in my own energy for the first two, three hours in the morning. And then if I still want to have tea, which up until now I have, uh, I can still drink that. So that's one thing that I'm, I'm curious when I can kick the caffeine habit because to me that's a sign that I'll be getting in touch with my natural energy and the, the cycle because I think that's, that's something from a young age. I always felt like, okay, just because almost everybody drinks coffee every morning, to me that doesn't mean we need it to thrive, to be inspired, to have a lot of energy. So still drinking a little bit of key tea, um, just simple green tea, but that's been, been all right. And I honestly, I find I don't, I don't really need it. It's not that I'm really tired and the green tea gives me energy. So as I just shared, usually I'm up for three, two to four hours before I drink it. But I do get headaches still every day. And I find that the tea, as a stimulant, it gives me more energy to overcome the pain. So that's one thing I'm still working with is it's not as much. The problem before was, oh, how, how, do I, how do I help myself? I'm so, so lost. I'm so heavy. I'm, I'm in so much pain. Now, the struggle that I've been facing is more of a, hmm, I have all this energy, but I also have a headache. And it's like how to find that balance between rest and, and do stuff. Between, oh, I just want to read all this stuff and increase my knowledge so I can eat more healthy foods and decide exactly what it is. Watch all these videos on, on how to make dressing and essentially training my mind to, to know the path. So that anytime doubt comes up, I can say, oh, I read about this, here's, here's what it is. That's been what I've been doing with most of my energy. But I've also been exercising a lot. At the same time, still got to rest. So I'm still doing a lot of guided meditations and spending you know, a good chunk, maybe 30, 40 minutes in a row, just doing a guided meditation, back, back to back to back, or some breath work. Last week I had two days I did about an hour of breath work in a row, which felt really good. But as soon as I stopped, the headache came back, so it's forcing me back into these very yin gentle practices to just ah, relax because I haven't had this much energy consistently in so long. So another thing that's exciting, but as, as I grow and as I expand, it still comes with challenges, just better challenges and ones that I'm very grateful for. So I've been eating mostly fruit, to be honest. I think I had a salad maybe once or twice this week, but I'm just noticing how salt brings back the cravings for the foods. So last night I actually put some salt on my watermelon, which is amazing, but I haven't been eating very much. I still have a ton of energy. I'm noticing I'm getting, getting thin, but not like super, I'm fasting skinny. It's, it's like cut skinny. So I really appreciate that. And another thing I'm celebrating is I used to be OCD about exercise, and some members of my family still are. There are worse things to be OCD about. And I used to do yoga three, four times a week, go on a run one or two times a week and go to the gym. And really, I was exercising four to six days a week. And this week, I've exercised six days in a row. I've just been going on a run during the sunset. It's been beautiful. I went to the gym one day and I've also been doing morning yoga. So this is a miracle in itself for me because I haven't exercised six days in a row since 2016, probably 2015. It's not like I keep a chart, but I haven't had the energy. I haven't had enough. <laughs> I haven't had enough time where I have the energy to do it. My mind is like, oh, I want to exercise, but I'm just like, oh, I need to rest. So that's something I'm extremely grateful for grateful for and I'm celebrating again it's like this this new problem I'm facing it's like what to do with all this energy I notice this voice in my head it's like you gotta work and go make money and and I can really feel that all of these old patterns and conditionings are coming out and I believe it's because I'm, I'm healing this part of my gut that's been in there since that time so to me it makes a lot of sense logically if you believe that as without so within and other spiritual universal laws, if you will, that these energies in my stomach, as they're released, it has attached to it cellular memory, which contains 
the emotions that I felt when I was eating them, which is crazy. Last night I had a good 20 minute cry. I was just sobbing and just remembering all the times that I used to binge eat and eat so much. And when I was just so lost and I just, I wanted to feel healthy, but I thought the answer was just more exercise and I was eating fruits and vegetables and the right foods according to my friends and family and, and the government, but I just didn't feel whole. I didn't feel connected to myself. And so I was just like literally purging these emotions and it, it's, it felt amazing. And then I was blowing my nose and hawking loogies and I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting rid of mucus. The lymphatic system is working. So it just, just felt amazing. Mm. So anyways, it's interesting because I also noticed I'm craving a lot of foods that I haven't eaten in years. I was craving s'mores. I've been vegan for the last, pretty much, I was like 99% vegan for the last two years and pretty much cut out all junk food for the last four years. So I was craving s'mores. I, I probably haven't eaten a s'more in like 10 years. Um, I was craving meat. I was craving like a big Korean barbecue. And, and again, associated with that craving, I have a specific memory of a night when I went out with my friend Alan and his partner and we had an all you can eat Korean buffet. So to me, it's super fascinating how once you tune in and really watch and observe what's going on and feel, it feels like I'm just releasing these cellular memories that have just been trapped in there. So it aligns with what yoga teaches. They're called samskaras, these energetic imprints. And then, but I never learned about that in the physical body. And I'm feeling like now those energetic imprints have these I don't know, parasite or just mucus or whatever's going on in my stomach. And so it feels really empowering and amazing to be eliminating those. So we just got an enema too. So I'm excited to do some enemas. Of course, I'm going to be careful with those, but that's one thing that I, I've also realized too. Sometimes I have a headache and I don't really feel well. And then I'll drink some tea that helps me go to the bathroom and then I feel much better. And it's easy to say, ah, oh, I'm addicted to caffeine. I need the tea to help me get through the day. What I feel is really going on is the tea helps me eliminate, helps me poop. And then once I poop, I feel much better. And so I'm gonna experiment with, with an enema in these next few days instead of tea and see how that goes. I also got a bunch of herbal supplements in the mail, which I'm super excited about. I got some adrenal support, I'm doing a candida cleanse, another bowel good to go, bowel movement, soother. So I've got support from these herbs, which I'm learning about all these names. Wow, so many healing herbs out there. It is, it's amazing. I've gone deep into the plant medicine world and it's amazing to me how many psychoactive plants there are out there that are healing. And now I get to go into the ones that are legal, which is awesome, and learn about how they help with the digestion track and, and help heal in those different ways. So, so yeah, I have not been eating that much to be honest. Like today I ate half a watermelon for lunch and then I had a little bit of a papaya as a snack, maybe like a third of a papaya, pretty light. And I wasn't even hungry, I was just tired. And so again, that's a, a pattern I'm noticing where I'm tired and I'm eating. But to me, that's okay. I'd rather eat some papaya than take some weed or drink some coffee or take a stimulant that's gonna be worse than that. So I had some papaya and then I went on a run. After the run, I was so hungry. I was like, I wanna eat a million different things. Again, old pattern. I used to exercise and then I would eat six times more than the calories that I would burn. And I, I just read a study recently that said 70% of your body is what you eat. And it's only like 10 to 20% about exercise and then the rest, maybe it's sleep or something, but to me, it's realizing how important it is what I put into my body, where I used to figure, all right, if I exercise for 90 minutes, then I can just eat whatever I want. And I found myself in that pattern today after when I went on a sunset run, a run set. <laughs> and I was just super hungry. I was like, I wanna eat all these different foods. I was like going crazy. My fiance, June, is like, oh, I'll make a, a smoothie. I'm like, a smoothie for dinner? No, I need to eat more. I was just craving, craving. And then eventually I sat down and I meditated and then I wasn't even hungry anymore. 
it was not a craving coming from my stomach. It was just a, a psychological pattern because I have so much energy too. It's like I'm getting more challenged by my thoughts because before I'm just tired. I'm like, oh, thought, oh, thought. Now I'm like, ah, all over the place, not very grounded. So then I meditated and then after that, I, I realized I wasn't even hungry. I, I still ate dinner. So I had a, we had a smoothie bowl of spinach, blueberries and papaya and, and mango. And then I finished 80% of it and I was like, wow, I'm full. But I still had a little of that voice like, but we need to eat a lot, we just exercised. So I still finished it, but I didn't really, I didn't need to. And so to me, it's, it's just powerful, it's magical. I'm still having some problems with my sleep and I've been using Syrian rue and passion flower tinctures to help with that, to help me fall asleep. I used, sorry, not Syrian rue, um, what's it called? Something root. Oh, maybe I'll mention in the next video. So, um, anyways, sleep is still still a challenge for me because I have all this energy, and usually at nighttime my headaches usually are, are much better. Um, I'm not so sure why that is. Maybe it's just because as the days goes on, I kind of shake it off. But I've been finding myself up at that, you know, up at 10, 11, just all this energy. So I'm just reading books. The other day, I, I, I couldn't sleep. At 2 a.m., I got out and, and wrote a bunch of raps that were just coming through me. And, and again, rap and hip hop, all this stuff is coming back. This is like my teenage years. I was super into hip hop. I used to write, I would study the dictionary, try to memorize words so I can rhyme them. And it's just crazy to me because all these energies are coming up and coming out. And it's exciting. I feel like I'm, I'm doing some deep work, some deep healing. So, so yeah, still working on the sleep thing. But overall, I'm just grateful and I'm excited. And, and yeah, I'm just motivated to stay on this path. So pretty much eating 80, 90% fruit, um, no fat. I haven't had any fat this week because we're going to do a gallbladder, gallbladder cleanse soon. And so yeah, just fruit and some herbs. I had a little bit of kombucha today, which to me felt like cheating. And last night before my big cry, before my big release, we went to the movies and we were both like, oh, we're gonna wanna crave popcorn. And so we, we packed snacks. We brought cucumbers and apples. And again, I wasn't hungry. That's one thing I'm working towards because I know from the, the books that I've read and people I've talked to and just common sense that you shouldn't eat unless you're hungry. Wait till your body gives you the signal instead of just showing up and eating because you're tired or because it's a social event or because you're high or whatever that may be. And so I wasn't, I wasn't feeling so great at the movie because that was before I had my big emotional release. And so I was just like, grumpy this little kid and I was like All right, I'm gonna eat a cucumber so I'm like emotionally eating cucumbers in the movie theater and then I was like oh, I'm gonna eat an apple <laughs> so I, I just think it's funny I used to yeah I used to binge eat so much especially in college when I was on substances alcohol and weed and I would take Adderall in the morning and when the Adderall was fading I would get a headache so then I would take weed for the headache and then I would be super healthy and barely eat anything during the day because the Adderall suppressed my hunger and then at night I would just be st still hungry and have all these cravings and then ugh, eat so much it's just not a very healthy not a very healthy lifestyle and that's one thing I'm, I'm realizing too how much how much harm I've done to my body through overeating even if it was quote healthy foods and realizing that whew, it's just all making sense the truth is really setting me free and it's sad it's it's harmful at times it's painful it's not harmful it's painful it's sad but it's it's beautiful more than anything else and I'm just grateful for that another thing that I want to share I found interesting is for a couple days my farts were just horrible and I'm just like what I'm eating like watermelon and mango and mint and cilantro like coriander why are my farts so terrible and my friend who's been helping me through this she was like, your farts smell like sulfur. You must be getting rid of sulfur deposits. So then we call them, I call them sol farts. <laughs> so that was something that was interesting. And, and Jude and I almost slept in separate beds one night because I couldn't sleep and I was farting. 
So it was tough on her. I kept waking her up. <laughs> so that's another thing that's just happening. It's, to me, it's, it's funny how someone could easily look at what's happening and say, oh, I'm, I'm, e I'm going so strict, but I'm crying and I'm farting. It smells horrible. And then they go off of these, these lifestyles or these paths, these diets, whatever you want to call it. So to me, it's just super helpful. I'm really grateful that there's so many abundant resources out there to learn from. So Arnold Eret, I just started reading a book on toxemia. There's so many people on YouTube, Professor Spira, he talks about the mucosless diet healing system. Dr. Morse, I'm reading his book. Uh, there's a guy, Life Regenerator, Dan McDonald, he's got some content. And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm just high off life, high off fruit, high off of healing. And I'm just very grateful to, to be on this path. So with all that, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I will talk to you soon, whenever I make my next video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, peace be the journey.